Okay, so as we uh, get here, James chapter 4, get down to verses 11 through 17, we are uh, starting to get to the end of the book of James. If you remember right, back in chapter thir- uh, 3, I want to go back to that just to kind of help us remember the idea that we closed out there with, and we started off talking about teachers and the use of the tongue, and we ended with that idea of wisdom and where we get our wisdom. Is it from b- above? Is it from below? And where's that source of what we are teaching, what we are saying, how we are using the tongue? Then get over here into chapter 4, and he starts off uh, going through, talking about the fact that there's divisions amongst them, and lays out the reason for that. There's selfishness involved, and really starts to get out and point out the fact that they have been unfaithful to God. He calls them adulterers and adulteresses. And like we talked about last time, what needs to be done? As those who he's writing to that are Christians, they have been baptized believers, what they need to do to make sure uh, that they are right with God, that they need to humble themselves. We then get down here into... Verse 11, verses 11 and 12, and that's really how we're going to break up this section. you got verses 11 and 12, and then 13 through 17. And in verses 11 and 12, we see a warning against evil speaking and judging. Would somebody want to read verses 11 and 12 for me? Of chapter 4. Gerald? Okay, very good. We'll get to, like I said, 13 through 17 in a minute. We're going to start off here this warning against evil speaking and judging. He starts off with this idea of do not speak evil of one another. The idea of to speak evil of one another is to slander, to traduce, to criminate. That idea of uh, talking about someone, slandering them in such a way in which you're trying to hurt their reputation. You're trying to tear them down. And as those that we have seen... Uh, that have an issue uh, with selfishness, right, as we go back up to the top of chapter 4, it would make sense that this would be um, a case or a situation that's being talked about. So he starts off with this, Now he also says, uh, and do not judge one another. I want to start off with this first and go ahead and lay some groundwork on judging because it is true, judging is condemned in the Bible, and it is clearly condemned right here, okay? Judging is condemned in the Bible. But what type of judging? Because there's a a false concept in the world today about judging and types of judging that is condemned. Is it all judging that is condemned? What is it? What is it talking about here in James chapter 4? What I first want to start off with this is this. Yeah, judging is going to be condemned here. And we'll see the judging that is condemned in a minute. But I want to point out the fact that is all judging condemned in the Bible? No. No. Not all judging is condemned in the Bible. And these are the words of Jesus in John 7, 24, that you are to judge with righteous judgment. So there is a way or in a sense in which we are to judge. You look back into chapter 2, he talked about the fact that they were uh, being judges with evil thoughts. And we'll get to that more in a minute and its connection here. But we get to the very end of James, verses 15 and 19, or sorry, James 5, 19 and 20. And it's pointed out there that there's an erring brother. And if you go to that one and restore that one, that that's a good thing. Well, how am I supposed to know if that one is an error if there is absolutely no way or no sense in which I can judge him? So there is a judgment that we are to make in some manner, some shape, some form. That's how we know false prophets, right? By their fruits you will know them. Well, that's got to involve some form of judging. So then what is being condemned here? What type of judging is being condemned? Judging... Uh, that uh, is separate and apart from the Word of God. In other words, using some other manner or means to judge outside of God's Word. That's what's being pointed out here. Though that is not the type of judging that we are to do. And whenever we look at it, we can see... Sorry, I left my actual Bible in the back. So i got to be clicking on things and it keeps going away on me. We see that point. He who speaks evil of brother, judges brother, speaks evil of the law and judges the law. So he's speaking evil of them. He's slandering them. He's uh, traducing, he's criminating them in a way that is not in accordance with God's word and in a way that is not going along with God's law. So what we are to do is we are to 
keep judging where it is supposed to be. What judging then here is condemned? There is a judging that we can do. Not all judging is condemned, so what judging here is condemned? Ronnie? Mm-hmm. where if we see someone in a fall we're to restore. This is the opposite of that, where we're making a false accusation that's outside the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Galatians 6 is using the Word of the day, and this is not. That's right, and that's really what you get to the end of James chapter, in James 5, 19 and 20. The, how do you know if one's erring? You know one's erring by the Word of God. Whenever you go outside of that is whenever you get to this point when you're judging with that in a manner that is wrong, that is unrighteous. You're using a standard that is not right. And we're going to kind of wrap this up when we get to verse 12 in a minute, but let's point out some examples of judging that is condemned. What is he condemning here? Judging before sufficient evidence is present, right? Can we do that from time to time? We uh, rush to a conclusion. We rush to a judgment. We read into a situation that's not there. We come to a conclusion not knowing all the facts. You know, some of us might think of a story that um, some of, probably most of you guys have heard. Um, I think it's an older one because I've heard it uh, from, some, some, from some of those who are older that I look up to. But, so I guess I'm thinking it's old. Uh, but you, you got a guy on a, uh, on a train, and he's got his kids with him, and they are going crazy, and, and they're acting up, and there's a gentleman sitting next to him, and the gentleman's just looking at him going, Man, that, that guy's got to get his kids under control. I mean, what is he doing? And then this gentleman goes up and, and says something to him, and the guy is just kind of in a haze and a fog, and he goes, I'm so sorry. We just buried their mother this morning, and I don't know what to do. See, that would be rushing to a judgment. You don't know all the facts. That would be a condemned manner or form of judging. You don't have all the facts in place, and you're judging that which is outside of God's standard. Judging based on personal differences. This is something that through COVID-19, uh, you know, might, might, might have come up. Personal judgments, the liberties in which we have. That which is God's fixed standard that he has given us, we are to adhere to and to obey and to be united in. That's what Harry was talking about this morning. But then there are other things within it that are a manner of liberty. How many times do we meet on Sunday? What time do we meet on Sunday? We got to meet on Sundays, but what time? How many times? All those types of things start to come in. You think about um, one that that seems to be prominent out there, homeschool versus public school. That's a personal uh, opinion on things. Personal difference. We're not to go down the path of judging and saying, well, that one's not right because their kids are public school. That one's not right because their kids are homeschool. That's a judgment call that we are not to be judging on. That, that is not something that is found in the word of God. Judging based on appearance. This is what James uh, was talking about when he said back in James chapter 2, verse 4, that they were being judges with evil thoughts. Back there, what was the context? What was going on? How were they being judges with evil thoughts? Say that again? Yeah, rich and poor, right? They would show preference to the poor person. Or, sorry, to to, to the rich person. There was partiality that was going on. (laughs) And the poor person, the poor one, uh, was not. So you got these judgments based on on appearance that he was condemning earlier. He's not condemning judging altogether. You're judging based on appearance, which is wrong. That's not part of God's fixed standard. Ronnie? You you referenced uh, John 7, 24 a minute ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Very good. Do not judge on uh, appearance. Judge with righteous judgment. In the context there back in John chapter 7 was you had those who were telling Jesus that he was wrong for healing a man on the Sabbath. And he pointed out, well, don't you circumcise on the Sabbath? On the eighth day, if somebody, uh, if a newborn, the eighth day is on the Sabbath, you circumcise. You're not thinking deeply enough. You're, You're judging based on appearance. And in, in, in what's going on and not thinking about holding fast to God's standard and God's law. There's nothing wrong with healing somebody is what he's pointing out. And so we're not to judge just based on appearance or, or, or our own thoughts and our own imaginations. We have a fixed standard in which is there to judge. Um, 
And so we kind of have those ideas, and there's some other ones you can bring out. But one man, one man uses his own standard of judging is when he, and this kind of gets to the second point, this is when he judges the law. Okay? So he tells them that they are to not speak evil of one another and to not judge his brother, and the one who does speaks evil and judges the law. What is he saying? In what sense? How do you judge the law? Well, this is how you do it. The one who is casting a judgment on somebody that's separate and apart from God's law is saying that God's word isn't enough, so they bring in their own thoughts. They're casting judgment on the law. How? The law isn't enough to say whether somebody is right or wrong. I've got to bring in my own judgment, my own thoughts, my own opinions into it. And that is clearly condemned throughout the Bible, and that's what James is condemning here. Gerald? Yeah, that's right. Once we go outside the scripture, we start binding where the scripture hasn't bound. We start doing those different things. We're judging in areas and manners in which we should not, in which we do not have the ability or authority. So th this is the, the, the type of judging that is being condemned. It's not all judging. And it makes sense when you keep it within the context that th that's what these people were doing, right? They, are, they, they have some various selfish motives that are there. And... Brian, go ahead. Oh, were, were you raising your hand or were you? I caught you. You can go ahead. I'll come back to my thought. Um, I, don't, I don't know if this is another point that you're making or not. No, that's fine. But to take this a step further, I, I would say, rather than God's word not being enough, sometimes people judge against God's word. That, that there is a person who is doing what's right according to God's law, and a person comes in and judges them and tells them they're wrong for doing it. I'm going to come in with my own thing, so and I'm actually going to take the position that doing what God's law says to do is wrong. And that happens all the time. I mean, there's lots of examples. Where people just say, well, I just don't think that's right. Well, I'm, I'm acting in accordance with God's that's law, wrong. so that is wrong. That's a really good point, and that, that was the one that, that I had in my notes that I was going to bring out that I hadn't thought about. But, yeah, that is an application that we see people doing where there's an individual that, that is doing what's right but some sort of personal indifference that's out there that they, for whatever reason, don't like this individual. Now they're judging them. It's like, wait a minute, I'm not doing anything that's wrong. I'm, 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 I'm doing what God's law has told me to do. Very, very good point. And so what we see is this uh, idea. And I wanted to start off with pointing out that it's not condemning judging as a whole, but that's not where I want to keep it. I just want to point out, okay, there are forms of judging that we are to do. So then what is being condemned? What is being condemned? is doing that which is outside of God's word. Or, or, or somebody like Brian was saying, they're doing what's right, but we're still judging and slandering that individual for whatever reason. That is what is being condemned here. And whenever we see that uh, thought process, whenever we see people uh, judging in that way, and if we're ones that have ever done that, we know what the motives behind it typically are. There's typically some sort of Selfish motive where we're trying to put them down and elevate ourselves, And in that form, we are not to be judging. We are to leave God's fixed standard word where it should be. He goes on to say, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? We have, that which, uh, we have that which we are going to be judged by. We know that. That's God's word. We need to leave it at that and not go beyond it by judging according to man's standards. And that goes to Gerald's point. Th this is what is being condemned in this case. You have individuals, and we see this various times to times, and we need to make sure and check ourselves and make sure we're not doing it in our own life. We have our thoughts, our opinions on the way things should be done, and then somebody else has a different one, and there might be a personal indifference. There, there might be some sort of thing there. We are not to be judging one another in those matters. That does not remove... If somebody is outside of Christ, if somebody is erring, that we don't go to them and restore one. And Ronnie brought that up with Galatians 6. Often we, we look at this and, and we, we use this word in, in a personal way where it's us doing the judging. 
Mm-hmm. In Galatians 6, and I, I like to go there because it's real clear, we're judging based on the law that we've been given. It's not our, our judgment, but we're, we're called to judge if someone is inside that law or not. In, in Galatians 6, it's easy. If you see someone overtaken with a fault, how do you know what fault? It's because we know the law. If they're not abiding by the law, it's our duty, it's our command to judge that person who's not in free and be with God. It's not our judgment, it's God's. He's already laid it out. That, that, that's a really good point. I really appreciate the way that you put that because a lot of times when we start going down this path and talking about it, it becomes a very personalized thing. It's like, wait a minute, no. We're, we're not saying uh, that we are the judge. What's going on is the judge has given us, right? That lawgiver has given us what we are going to be judged by, and that's what we keep it to. And what is being condemned here is not that, but whenever we step outside of that and start judging based on liberties that we have been given or, or just personal uh, indifferences, right? The, the, those types of things. And we need to be extremely careful that we don't do that. We adhere and we uh, all go towards and draw near to God and unite in that word. Uh, and whenever somebody steps outside of that, that's whenever it is proper to, uh, you know, approach that individual and to tell them that they're wrong. And in fact, if you don't, you're going to be held accountable for that, for not being willing to do that. Um, and so we need to keep it where it is, is, is really what, what I'm trying to say. This idea of, well, you're not the judge and you can't judge me and all these types of things. Jesus tells us to judge with righteous judgment that we're going to know those by the fruit that they bear, the actions and the things that they are doing, the things that they are saying, whether they are in accordance with God's word. And if they are not, then that is a judgment that we have to make in telling that individual that they are not in accordance with God's word. And here's the big thing. How do you keep it separate? Well, whenever I talk to that person or whenever I am making that uh, distinction uh, in my mind, there's going to be one that clearly I go to Scripture to show what's wrong, and there's one that has nothing to do with Scripture. It's all based on opinion. That's where the problem is. You know, the, the, this political cycle, I, I know everybody has their opinion on different things, uh, you know, uh, COVID, should we be meeting all the time? Or I, So many different things that come up. There are things that are fixed that we need to adhere to. Things are outside of it. We don't need to be judging others what they're trying to do. A lot of elderships were judged throughout this time in a way that, that, that was not right, that was going beyond. They were trying to do the best that they could with what they had. And we need to make sure that we're not slandering, that we're not speaking evil of. Think about the damage that we are doing whenever we are going down that path. No. One of the things that comes up in, I think, every passage that talks about judging in the New Testament is the issue of pride. And if it's not explicitly addressed, it's certainly implicit in what, what's happening here. If you look at, you know, at this, this unrighteous judgment, it certainly involves the elevation of self, pride, one of these things. And I think it's really critical whenever we're looking at judging in general that we don't come at this from a place of pride. I know this is something, like, for myself, I'm always trying to be on the lookout for pride in myself, and I'm sure you guys can be better there. But it's, I think it's very easy for, in something like this, if it, especially if it's unrighteous, well, how does any of that to this individual that we're judging? We're setting ourselves above them and saying, I am more righteous than you. And it might be worth for us to remember that we're ultimately only reason that you got into ministry is you know, pride. And that might be something here that they might have forgotten. All right. yeah, so, you know, you, you think about that and you definitely uh, need to make sure that we're handling ourselves properly whenever we go to that individual. And I'm going to go back to Ronnie's point in Galatians. That, that's why I think Ronnie likes Galatians 6 so much because it points that out. You got to make sure you have the right attitude and right uh, disposition, the right mindset about it whenever you go to this individual. That does not mean that we uh, sweep it under the rug and that we uh, don't do anything. You still have to be ones who goes and, and approaches them. And I had one other thought, but I forgot what it was. Ronnie's raising his hand. I'll, I'll make you forget it. Uh, no, in Galatians it says consider yourself. And John, mm -hmm. the reference already in chapter 7, it also talks about you look at your life first. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a problem, you fix that problem. 
Yep. So you don't be hypocritical. That's right. You check the plank in your own eye and you remove it. And, and here's the thing that, you know, it starts off in Matthew 7, the judge or do not uh, judge that you be not judge. Or I've kind of butchered that. But that's where a lot of people like to go and say that you can't judge. But whenever I, the way I handle it is I first remove the plank in my eye. That doesn't mean that I don't see the speck in my brother's eye. Whenever I do it, I still got a responsibility to go take care of that. It's just I got to look at myself first and make sure. Yep, make, make sure I'm right. Going back to uh, Noah's point, whenever he was talking about uh, making sure that we're not condescending, I think that goes back, and I forgot if it was Gerald or Ronnie that made the point, but I think it goes back to that point. You remember that, that, that what you're going to this individual about doesn't come from anything of your own wisdom or thought or, or anything that you have, but this is God's law that you're presenting to them, and you leave it at that. And if I go to it with that, look, this is not my own thoughts and my own opinions. This is not my feelings. This is what I'm seeing, and this is what God's word says. Then it's going to take a completely uh, different approach from me in order to do that. I'm not throwing down, hey, this is what I'm saying, leaving scripture completely out of it. With that said, I will say this. If somebody is unwilling to change and they do not have the right heart, they will take it as you are talking down to them and condescending. And you do need to check yourself. But just because you're standing for the truth does not mean that you are approaching them in the wrong way. Because that, that, that's what a lot of people do. I, I, if I approach them and they, they take it wrong, then the, does that mean that I handle myself? Maybe. Always check yourself. But don't, that doesn't mean that you shy away from that individual. We got kind of off track going down that path. But like I said, what I wanted to point out here is, is make sure we, we understand. Not all judging is being condemned. Okay, what's being condemned is whenever you go outside of God's law, and we need to make sure that whenever we are uh, going to approach somebody and talk to them about their standing, that that's what it's based on, that it's not based on my opinion, my thoughts, and what I think God's standard is. It's what it is. Steve? That's a good point. Hearing, hearing the message, right? As ones that uh, could possibly have somebody come to them for something that I'm doing that's wrong, I've got to always be willing to remove self and listen to what's, what's being said there and compare it to God's word. It's crazy how many times we, th- we, we talk about this stuff, but how it all does come back to that. There's the, the standard of God's word that if we would submit and adhere to and obey that and have the hearts to that, that's going to be the guiding truth, it would remove a lot of the fraction, or, uh, friction and factions and problems that are there in this idea of, well, you're judging me. If all we are are those who are looking out for the best interest of others and who are united in God's word. John? That's a, that's a really good application piece and a really good way to put it. And I've heard of many others that do that. I mean, you know, making the point earlier, we've got to make sure that we're using God's word and the standard whenever we are doing that. But whenever we approach them, having them read it, you know, they want to use a, well, so what you're saying? Well, <laughs> this is what God's word saying, and I didn't say a word. You made the application after reading the word of God. And it does take that element from them. So that, I appreciate that, and I appreciate that, um, that, that application to this.
James? That's right, and that uh, you know what what would end up happening is individuals who are in sin continue to go down that path. You know, so we we can't do that. I mean, uh, the simple fact that you take the gospel message to the world shows that there is some form that needs uh, to be done there. Very good discussion. I appreciate that. Does anybody have anything else on uh, this idea of? of judging, and, and the type of judging that's talked about here, anything like that, sorry, yes, Lily, sorry. I was just going to say, I think James is very purposeful in setting in um, what our understanding is supposed to come from, from the scriptures earlier, and it talks about how they were lying against the truth and lying to each other, and I think that all falls back down to their judging. They weren't getting their wisdom from God, and they were, they were still lying to themselves about themselves and what their actions showed them. I think that that's a really good point. You go back to James chapter 3 at the end, and I started with that, and I didn't even come back to it, but James chapter 3 at the end, that, that's what he's talking about, right? Where are you getting your wisdom from above or below, and the unrighteous judging, if you will, or the judging that's being condemned is getting that wisdom from below and judging based on your man's thoughts, not that divine standard that is there, which is uh, what is not condemned. That, that is judging that uh, is to be done. So very good, very good. Any other thoughts or comments on that? Go ahead, David. That's a, a, that's a really good point, and that falls right in line with, uh, you know, going down that path of, of uh, saying things and, and judging in manners and ways in, w- in which we aren't supposed to. And, uh, you know, I think you brought this up the other day when we were in a Bible study on Friday, but you got the kids in the back seat of the car. I mean, what, what are they hearing, and what kind of damage are you doing to them against a brother or a sister in Christ and, and slandering them? And many a times... I'd say many a times, if not the overwhelming majority of the time, it has nothing to do with the standard of God's law that this individual is in sin, that you don't like how they handled that. You don't like how they said this or that. And it wasn't that they did anything that was sinful. It was just you had a difference in opinion on it. Um, you don't like you know, how they're doing this or that or, or, or whatever. And 
you know, like we talked about earlier, you might not have all the facts, you might not know what's going on. That's the easy, lazy way to handle yourself, right? To not try to think the best in our brother and sister and go get all the facts about what may be going on and then, you know, talk to them about it and approach them. The easy way to do it is just to slander them, to come up with a judgment without having to do any digging or talking or, or have what would maybe be a hard conversation. And that's what a lot of, lot, lot of us do. That could certainly be what they were doing and uh, one of the things that's condemned. And so uh, we need to make sure uh, that, that we don't do that. Uh, and it can cause a lot of division amongst brethren. Great point. Anything else? Go ahead. You know, it's a, that's a really good point. You know, you, you think about going back to Galatians 6 or some of these other areas that's talking about a brother or sister walking in error and you approach them and how do you do it? What is the purpose of you going to them? They're in sin and you want to save their soul from death, right? If that is my goal, if that is my purpose, then that's going to completely change the way that I go to them. I'm not going to them just because it's a check mark off list duty. Hey, they're in sin. I know that I can't let them be, so then I go point it out and then, oh, I did my service. I no. What's the goal? To save their soul. Now, I can't save their soul without going to them, so yes, that's going to be part of it. But like you said, it's going to be followed up with more than just, uh, you know, hey, I went to you, and then I just let it be, and I don't do anything else, and all I did was point it out. I'm going to try to help you through it. Hey, what? what? You can't just say you're in wrong and just fix it. Exactly. What, what can we do to, to help uh, through this? You know, let's, uh, what, let's have a study on it, you know? You know, that's a, that's a real good point, Tim. I want to go back to a point uh, Steve made in the class that I was in earlier this week about knowing your brothers and sisters of Christ, especially the one that you are a member of at that congregation. If I don't ever, ever talk to Tim, and then all of a sudden, the first time I talk to him in like a month and a half, and, and you know, outside of just saying hi, is a, you know, I heard this and, and I saw this in your sin. That's going to be a whole lot harder for him to take than if I have a genuine care for him just in general, not just the fact that he's in sin. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't go to you if I know you're in sin, but it, before that happens, if we get to know our brothers and sisters in Christ, it's going to be a whole lot easier for Tim to take that whenever I go to him. Um, he knows that I genuinely care about him. Uh, so I thought that that was a great point that Steve brought up in a class we were in uh, earlier this week. and. It goes so long with what you're saying. We get to know them. Now, it's going to be hard to know everybody the same, especially a congregation this size. I mean, this is a, a, a large congregation, but if the only time that we talk to anybody is Sunday and Wednesday, and then all at once we show up at the doorstep approaching them, you know, that's not, it's not that we don't remove the responsibility to do it, but, you know, it's going to make it a whole lot easier, and it's going to come from, um, you know, as far as the individual receiving the message, it's going to be a little bit uh, easier this one's always talking to me and always cared about me. They are genuinely concerned. And I, I appreciate that. I do. DJ, uh, thank you for raising your hand extremely high this time. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah, a constant self-examination of myself, right, to make sure that I am right. Very, very good point. Any others? We uh, just took up, I, I knew that was going to happen, but we just, whole class, two verses. <laughs> a lot there. I appreciate the conversation, guys. I, I really do. I mean, hopefully uh, you guys saw it as beneficial as I did, because this is something that we're dealing with, not only in the world, but it does creep in in the church. This idea, well, you, you can't, you're, you're not the judge, you can't judge me. Um, that's, and, and they might go here. That's not what's being pointed out here. But at the same time, we need to keep it where it is and make sure we aren't doing what's condemned here. See, a lot of times we talk about what we talked about today, and then we miss the point of what is being condemned. You cannot be judging on that which is outside of God's word. That seems to be something that, that, that has happened a lot lately. We need to make sure we, need, uh, we, we keep it where it is. Uh, any kind of approaching we do is because somebody is contrary to the word of God, not based on a personal indifference or opinion.